welcome back to another video. So I have the Android, no, the Google Pixel 3a, I, I, like, I'm mixing my thoughts up, running the Android Q Beta 4. This thing just got the beta a few days ago. With the release of Beta 4, the Pixel 3 and 3a XL were added to the list of beta supported devices. Thank you, Google. And this is the benefit of having the Pixel 3a, a device I can run the Cubate on without affecting, you know, my use of Pokemon Go. All of my apps, they all run perfectly fine on the Cubate, not a single problem. But for some reason, Pokemon Go doesn't want to load, and then after a few minutes of sitting there, not loading, it'll just, like, close the app out. Won't even give me, like, a crash message or not responding message, it'll just close out. It's weird. Anyway... So with the Q-Beta 3, they over... My screen froze. There we go. With the Q-Beta 3, they overhauled the gesture navigation. So instead of this half-baked, poorly thrown together thing that we got in Android 9.0 Pi, which uh, I hated that so much, the gesture navigation in Pi sucked. Half the time it was gestures, half the time it was button pressing, it was like, what do you want to be? Are you gestures or are you buttons? Which is it? It, it? it irritated me. Anyway, now with the Q Beta 3 and the Beta 4 improving upon it, we have full gesture navigation. I swipe up from the bottom on the home screen and I get to my recent app. Not my recent apps, I get to my app drawer, which is just so much better. I would swipe up on there and I would access recent apps with the key, uh, Android Pie swipe gestures, which was dumb. So I'd have to do either a long swipe, long swipe, uh, or double swipe to be able to get to my app drawer, which was just, mm, no. And then the recent, not the recent, the back button was still a button. It wasn't gesture integrated at all. Now it's gesture integrated by swiping in from the sides of the device, either side, which could make some hamburger menu uh, apps uh, glitch out because you won't actually open the hamburger menu you'll just go back and close the app out which i've done that a few times but google supported apps seem to ignore the back button or the back swipe function on the side that has the hamburger menu so if other developers could incorporate that it won't be as big of a deal just like have the apps that support that kind of ignore a back swipe for that side of the screen if they did that, that would be fine. That would solve the problem. But as of right now, no one that I know of has really done it. And a lot of the apps, like minor apps, might not even support it. Because what you'll find is tiny apps that only have like a couple hundred downloads that have a hamburger menu or styles like that might not update it because they're not popular enough to care to update it to be supported. Which just... Anyway... That causes that can cause a huge problem, but if all but if everyone can just update their apps, it fixes the problem. Well, if they update to ignore it like that, like Google seems to have done, like the Google Play Store ignores it anyway. On that, the Q swipe gestures are just leaps and bounds better than Android Pie's gestures. Just fully integrated swipes. They're probably gonna tweak it again in later betas. Because I've heard the, I've seen something about how the pill is going to get a little thicker and larger. Because uh, right now it's kind of very thin, like a piece of paper. So if they make it, a, they they do. I think they do need to make it a little thicker and larger. But as of right now, I don't know for sure if they're going to do that. I think someone found that. Along with it overlaying into the apps, like a picture in Google Maps of it, it of there not being a white bar or a gr transparent gray bar. It just sitting over the app. Which, that is also going to be nice because it allows me to use more screen real estate. Which is always good. Plus, it just looks cleaner. Like, the bars at the bottom kind of have too much going on. So if that doesn't exist anymore, I'm not going to complain. I will be happy. Uh, with the Cubeta, they also introduced new color options and theming options. In the s colors of space, orchid, ocean, and cinnamon. Which... Cinnamon just looks like a poop color to me, and I will never be using cinnamon. <laughs> but whatever. So I don't I don't want my icons to look like poop. Period. That's it. So I will never use the cinnamon color. I actually am quite fond of the space color. It's got like this blue 
but it's very toned down blue. So it just fits well with my wallpaper and how I like my phone. I don't like, I, I want it to pop, but not pop a lot. So it pops a lot nicer than the default blue color. Anyway, all in all, oh, there's another thing. I forgot to mention this. So there's a thing that, go, that looks like they're gonna be incorporating in later betas where you press and hold the power button and it'll bring up a card menu to access like loyalty cards and debit cards and credit cards before I pay. Before I can just tap it and the default one I use will kick in. This will actually allow me to select it without having to open up the app. That is awesome. Samsung has a similar thing, but this, it's not incorporated the same way. I think you have to swipe up on the home screen and the lock screen to do it. I don't know. I don't have a Samsung phone. I haven't had a Samsung phone in a while that I've actually used Samsung Pay on. So I wouldn't know how that works. Anyway, if they do that, that would be nice is all. Long press or double press or whatever, and it activates that. Nice and convenient. Because I do have both a debit and a credit card saved. I don't ever use my credit card, but still it'd be nice. Anyway, all in all, the Q beta is looking really good. Like, I am really excited for the official release of Android Q later this year. So, yeah, I'm a huge fan of it. And I love the improved swipe gestures. Just leaps and bounds better than the Pi one. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more videos coming soon. And peace out.